Today we continue our reflections in Luke. We're in chapter 19, verses 29 to 38. In this Bible reading, we see the well-known story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. He sends two disciples ahead to find a colt, a young donkey, with instruction to say to the owner, the Lord needs it. And then as he rides along, the people throw down their cloaks in front of him. A great crowd of people and his disciples began to praise him. They shouted out, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And so we see Jesus planning his own parade. He sets the route. We edge ever closer to Easter. Imagine for a moment who you would have perhaps been if you were there. The people with various emotions watching. Mary, who loved him. Martha, who had served him. Peter, James, and John, his closest disciples and friends. Maybe even Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead. I wonder where you are in that crowd. Front row, center, far back, leading the cheering, maybe even joining in with that cheering. The story invites us to wonder where we are in the praise party. Then, in the story, we have the cult. Jesus says, the Lord needs it, which is a massive statement to make because up until now, Jesus has tried to be on the down low. And now we have a procession. Now he uses the title, Lord. Jesus does this at Passover, a time where people remembered the liberation out of slavery from Egypt. At the same time, the Roman governor would enter Jerusalem at the beginning of Passover week, surrounded by troops with military might on a powerful horse. The procession was designed to convey power, to remind the people of the city of the might of Rome. And here Jesus is going into battle, riding to conquer sin and death on a cult that represents peace. And so the good news Jesus is ushering in is the gospel. The term implies and includes salvation, literally meaning the message that saves us. The Roman Empire used this phrase to bring rule and reign. Jesus uses it to bring the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is challenging the powers that be and us with the alternative kingdom, one shaped by justice and of peace, one that we are being both invited into and one that we are called to be both citizens of and ambassadors for. I wonder for you how you might be part of that story today. Someone once said that the story you live in is the story that you live out. The story that you live in is the story that you live out. Meaning the more we inhabit the Gospels, the more we immerse ourselves in the Jesus way, the more our lives will become cross-shaped and bear fruit for his name. May you join Jesus in the journey to Jerusalem this year. May his gospel continue to profoundly impact you and shape who you are. Amen.